Praise God. Hallelujah. For instance, all of us here, we had our bath. <laughs> if you know bath, we will not cope. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So I said today we are, we are ministering through questions. We'll come up twice doing that. So we'll get to it. What do you do when God says he, is, he has connected you to your spouse and that your season of waiting is over, but you are still yet to see a physical manifestation of what God has said? This is the position where a lot of people are. And this is why we explain, if you read Genesis, when God said in Genesis 2.18 that it was not good for man to be alone, the next thing he saw was animals, not a wife. You know, sometimes God gives you a word and you do not process the word that God has given if you read verse 19, the next thing that happened was that he began to name animals. Excuse me, I thought the next thing I would see would be a wife. Now, a lot of people have lost their word not because God did not speak, but because they did not process what God said. I'll give you another example. Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. He did not say Lazarus will not die. There are two different things. Unto means this story will not end in death. So, when Jesus' disciples became concerned that Lazarus had died, in fact, I keep saying that if any of Jesus' disciples was wise, he would have taken the shine of raising the dead. You know why? When they arrive, you would have said, Master, say you know go die. Lazarus. Lazarus was in a position to answer anybody who came in the name. So Jesus looked at the twelve. You still didn't understand. So Jesus said, since none of you caught it, Lazarus, come forth. So when God gives a word, the word is not invalidated, but the word needs action. And faith is first a disposition before a movement. And that's why, what will faith make you do? Lord, I give you praise. I thank you because I'm getting married gloriously. Like the story of the woman, I'll stop there and Julia will take that. There's a story of a woman, real life story, Goita, big one. She went for a service and a message was taught like this, that from the amen moment, count it done. Because if you count it done, it will be done. Do you get what I'm saying? So, she will be bathing and say, Lord, I thank you because this goiter is gone. But it was still there. Lord, I thank you because this goiter is gone. Let me tell you, you sell your miracle short when you start doubting the miracle. That's why it says in Mark 11, 24, what things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have. Oh, verse 23 says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. That's why when you pray, the devil does not bother when you pray. The devil bothers with you after you pray, where he begins to introduce the doubt. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why every time you truly pray, as you are walking away, Satan begins to contend. Turn to the devil and say, if my prayer was not potent, why are you bothered? <laughs> doubt does not mean thoughts do not come to invalidate your prayer. It, and does not doubt is the word that says and does not entertain doubt. So doubt can come but don't open the door. Say, you know what, Satan? Thank you for all the doubts you're throwing. You're bothered because it's coming to pass. So get out. And get mad. That's not when you meet your community of sisters and say, hmm, husband's casting this word. Oh, truly? <laughs> Julia found husband, you can find husband. <laughs> Pastor T, did you find husband? Are you coping? You are enjoying I'm really. You know, find a husband. After, after the ones you rightly rejected, did God not say to you, Say to me this year, Lord! And does not doubt in his heart. And on a certain day, the woman continued her ritual. Oh! And she just felt something like a camo. And she was like, Phew. Everything was melting. And she called her daughter. What's going on? She packed her goiter with her hand through Thanksgiving. Be anxious for nothing. Fresh skin like new baby. But in all things by prayer and supplication, top top with Thanksgiving. Make your request known. How much more when God has given the word? You said it. I believe it. That said it will say. God can speak and you will not receive it. That's why Jonah prophesied that Nineveh will be wiped out. They repented and changed the condition of the wiping. But guess what? Go and read Nahum chapter 2. A generation arose that qualified for the prophecy of Jonah. Nineveh was grinded to dust. Your action is what determines 
what the spoken word of God becomes in your life. That's why it's not God's will for any to perish, but a lot will go to hell. Why would they go to hell? Their action will betray his intention. Praise God. Uh, just to add to that, uh, I would like to read a scripture, but I will give you the assignment of going back to read it. First Samuel 13 from verse 1 to 13. Uh, now Saul was, uh, uh, had won some victories, and now the, the enemy camp was coming against him. They had reinforced and they were coming. And the children of Israel were actually scared. You know, some were hiding in caves and stuff like that. They were hiding. Now, those that summoned up courage and followed uh, Saul, they were still afraid. But then, there was protocol to be followed. Samuel had told Saul that, wait for me here, as in I'm coming to meet you at a certain point. Now, when, while Saul was waiting, he waited, he waited till that particular day. But he found out that people were beginning to lose faith and leave him. And he got agitated. He decided to break protocol and do the sacrifice uh, uh, perform the sacrifice himself and just after he performed that sacrifice Samuel showed up and he said why didn't you wait for me and he said that because of the agitation the people were going away from me that's why I did that sacrifice and he said uh, now the kingdom has been taken away from you now God, God had already uh, you know rejected him as king uh, but what I want to draw out of that is that your, your, your assurance is in who said it. Mm. The integrity of who said. Mm. If Saul had taken his eyes off the people and their, you know, their pressure. agitation and exactly. the pressure, he would have put his confidence and faith in the fact that he's going to show up and things are going to be okay. So your confidence should be in the God that said, has he said and he will not bring to pass? Has he said mm. and he will not perform? Mm. It is God that said, not man. And God expects us to live by faith. So if God has given you the assurance and you are waiting and the waiting period is almost over and you are not seen, keep waiting, keep your faith, keep your confidence because faithful is he that has said and he will bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second and the third question are so connected is about dealing with the pressure of marriage. Let me say this to you. Now, this is where people now say, let's face reality. I always use the example this way. If R and M can still be in ministry and the image you know of me is of joy and excitement, not that this world is not my home, then you can wait joyfully. We've been to South Africa this year, London this year, Abuja Hangout this year, Lagos this year, Gombe November the 26th. How do we spend the kind of money we spend? The principles of Christ, the Christian faith is the same, irrespective of where you're applying it. Whether it's in the wait for marriage, let me tell you, the wait gets difficult when you have no word. The problem is no word, not the wait. I'll give you an example. If I told you, meet me tomorrow morning and you have one million dollars, let me tell you what will happen. When you order Uber, you will send the picture of the driver to 10 persons to be sure the car you are entering. Why are you getting extra careful? One million dollars tomorrow morning. If I, you may call your friend who is on the island to come to mainland to pick you. Because you don't want any kidnapping in case the word leaked that you're about to be one million dollar rich. Why? Your action begins to move in anticipation of a time and date. My people have a saying, Oh no, no, joke, mama, jelong, akulium, bebe dun. A visitor whose departure date you know, it is easier to bear with. So as he's messing up, you know, by the grace of God, next week, you shall be gone. We have agitated singles because they have not received their word. What should you truly wait for as a single? Wait for the word, not for the man. Not for the woman. Wait for your word. Because until his time came, his word tried him. Have you read that scripture? I'll give you an example. That's why Adam could not settle. If you read Genesis 2.20 in the NLT, 
when Adam was done naming, verse 21, the Bible said he exclaimed, at last. That means he was looking for something. So your wait season is actually a wait on the word, not for a person. So you get what I'm saying? He that promised, that's why Abraham did not collapse. And as I'm saying this, this applies to you. Trust in the Lord for marriage, for babies, for money, for we just wait. Oh, and I heard a song some time ago that I believe in. While I'm waiting, I'll be worshiping you, God. While I wait, what do I do? I worship. See, your Christian faith does not accommodate of a vacuum. Anytime there's a vacuum, you will suffer in the hands of Satan. Because it's like setting a stage for him to perform. So what do we feel into the space? Our faith. Why? Let me tell you. That's how you put your hands in your pocket. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. <laughs> hey! You know when we tell some people, Mommy, come in to me now. They say they have started. Let me tell you. You are seated here because money come to me now. Hello? We didn't trek from Abuja. Eh? Hey? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So the waiting principle is the same, but there's a go word. Go! You know, I, I know some of our UK people are watching. Man of God, when we enter London, eh? I've been sharing this testimony. These guys were so. See, when you catch your go word, I mean, we're meeting almost everybody on the team for the first time ever, physically. If you know what those guys did on ground, venue, logistics, so, my God, why? You just got a word, go, and you just went on the word. So you just have faith. I tell you, for instance, how do we walk into this place and believe anybody walking here? You know, now when you make people pay money, now I go, they go, but I tell you a story. In January, in South Africa, because God wanted to put more money in our hand for the program, Somebody reached out the night before the program. Did every, it was a paid training. Did everything paid. Didn't show up at 8 a.m. She paid about midnight. I had to finish the program and send the mail. We didn't see you. Hope all is well. Somebody who was replying in seconds the night before took like one day to reply. Mm, something came up. What are the odds? What are the odds? I remember one of those hangouts, this very Lagos, we are at the airport. Our hotel accommodation bill was not paid. Julia and I were at the airport when the alarm to pay it entered. You know there's a difference between alert and alarm. The alarm hit, boom! At the airport, what are the odds? You know, at that point in time, eh, I was tempted to ask my husband, are we really doing this? You mean we are entering this plane? <laughs> To go to Lagos without what you will do, and but, you know, just like Isaac, you know, when he, his father was he, he, he was. I just turned to ask, God will provide, God will provide. See, the reason you get into depression is that your eyes leave the one who has made the promise. Husband or wife can become an idol, anything that makes you start questioning God has become an idol. God is more interested in you're getting married than you're interested to get married. Because there's a purpose tied to the marriage. So I go to him. Oh, that's what the Bible says in Romans 4. That he judged him faithful who had spoken. How do you wait? You wait on the word, not on the person. To add to that, uh, Ephesians 4 from verses 6 and 7. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. With prayer, uh, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your report to God. And it says the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And it, it, it didn't just stop there. If you read verse uh, uh, 8 uh, to 9, it says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, if they are trust, uh, trustworthy, if there are things of good report, think on these things. Now, as a man thinketh in his heart, so it is. 
so is he. Now, why people have a lot of pressure packed up is because of their meditation. So if I spend my time thinking, ah, will I get husband? Will, will, when will the husband come? Ah, I'm making my, I'm pushing myself into a pressured position, a desperate position. But God is telling you, be anxious for nothing. When you remember the, the issue, just go, go before God with thanksgiving in your heart and just pray about it. But make sure your meditation are on the right things. I give you a secret. Everything that frustrates you is something you are not equipped to handle. I'll give you an example. I'm not equipped to handle the details of my miracle. For instance, last week, after sharing the details of the balance of spending with Julia, I was in the office, she was in her office, and we agreed in faith and agreed to pray in the night. One transaction happened. I said, baby, we're just talking about this. I forwarded it to her. Half the bill is gone. And she's like, give him praise. I'm not equipped. Now, how could I have known that God had somebody when we're agreeing just a few moments? Getting ready to move. Let me tell you. Some of you seated here. The person may be in Canada. They will sign his, it's not deportation, He's posting back to Nigeria. Not just Nigeria, to Lagos. Not just to Lagos, to that office that next week you will meet in a conference. But let me tell you, when it's that murmuring, the angel in charge of that signature will withdraw and start eating granite. <laughs> then the demon in charge of the delay of the signature will become activated. <laughs> you just make the boss forget the paper inside your <laughs> That's what the Bible says we should not forsake our profession of faith for it's of great recompense. So what I say, oh, praise. See, the next question will buttress the point. Don't worry. How do you prepare for wedding depending on available resources? I married through crowdfunding. <laughs> Buy my book well, out of physical copy. Go to Okada Books. Help, I'm in love. Our story is inside. If I have a four-part teaching in the book, how to get married on any budget? Somebody say sense. My father paid my first rent. I left his house two weeks to my wedding. I labored. I should be paid. Israel did not leave Egypt empty-handed. I lost my stepmom a year before the wedding. The man was busy. I had to come and be mother to the children, my siblings. Where will I be going before? When I became arrogant, over because we sit down and do the bill together, we know who is paying. My pastor's wife held my ear and said, yeah, Something is wrong. If your father does not marry for you, who will he marry for you? You are first child, first son. What is he doing with money? The first thing you do, weigh what you have. The second thing you do, weigh your points of advantage that may not be money. For instance, there are people near me. If you tell me you are getting married, the least you get is 20K. Count it. Count your social capital. You know, people sit down and get overwhelmed. No, before you get overwhelmed, count, you belong to a department in church. What are they doing? Go and meet your leader. I'm getting married in three months time. Announce it early. <laughs> so that people can have opportunity to contribute. Some of you who have sent us money, you will not send us money if we don't have hangouts. People fund something that is moving. Let me tell you, if you consider the wind and the cloud, you will not go marry you. I married two months after my NYC. That's why I'm giving you a secret. I passed her in October. I married in December. The, 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 the introduction and all those things was done as a correct copper. I put copper uniform where traditional go. So fear, fear is keeping some people mar is keeping some people. Yes. Let me tell you what is expensive is wedding, not marriage. Yes. If two of you are eating and not dead, then you can live together in a house and continue to eat what you used to eat. You bring your resources together and he that finds a wife finds a good thing. I made my first international passport in life with my first son. Then he and my wife left to London ever before I knew her. The first time I touched a plane physically, man of God, was when we were preparing for wedding. If not before that time, 2010. See, you see, if God can do it for me. You know how many countries I don't go last, last. See, if, 
If not, before 2010, the only plane I see is the one in the air. Aeroplane! <laughs> you think I'm joking? First international passport, 2012. First ever. First time I went to a correct country because that 2010 one I could you know, through Lagos. First time. And I left this country. 2013. First time. Proper living in Nigeria, not 2010 Lagos, Kotonu. I, I get what I'm saying. And that also speaks about when I women them. You better have the right heart through your eyes. Because some of you the problem, you have judged his entire destiny. You just looked at him and summarized his future. You just make it look like he has no hope. <laughs> Julia and I agree that even if he's under a tree, we will marry. If family can attend under a tree, they come and attend. Some of you are letting your family oppress you. You want big wedding, you don't want to bring big money. You're on your own. <laughs> you know, just sit down with your father and say, Dad, you know, one of the things I like about you, Dad, is that you have taught us to be responsible. I know my wedding is coming. I don't want a burden on you. By the grace of God, I want to show you that I can withstand the storm. I want to show you that I don't live on my father's money. I will start my life little. I will grow it. Dad, I remember your story. You say when you married my mom, you know you were so and so. What are you just copying him? <laughs> then you now say, wow, but you are my son. Dad, you got it. <laughs> yes, I'm your son. Let me tell you. Count your advantage. I, see, I know they lie. Let me tell you my advantage. Rent, my father. First furniture, my father. Her culture, they command you to leave the kitchen and the bedroom empty. And they deal with it. Family size bed, like football. Mirror to the side. Kitchen, gas, dispenser, fridge, deep freezer. The devil is a bastard. I should be worrying myself. So what did I do? When my father paid the rent, I rocked the room because they allowed rock. It's bed that they didn't allow. And gas they didn't allow. I rocked the room. Count your cultural advantage. Some of you have been showing as should be for all your cousins. Go and collect your payback. Make a list. Auntie Jane, Auntie Modupe, Auntie Teni. Count all of them. Buy wine. Two, five, a bottle. Go and exchange wine for money. Uncle, I came to announce to you specially. <laughs> Some people will not give you if you don't make them special. So I make you special. Uncle, how can I marry and I'll not bring the woman I want to marry for your pass back? Submission. Uncle, the honest truth is the way you have treated me in life if not that I know this is my biological father, I would have thought you are the one. <laughs> you have not asked for money, but you have asked for money. <laughs> for your reception, have chairman of the day, father of the day, uncle of the day, commit all of them. You would think I'm joking. Where the money comes through wisdom, not through account. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> how should you and your partner start talking about wedding plans when you sense it is the season and she is she or he is not talking it's not really talking that's not your partner that's your friend next <laughs> your partner is the one that has crossed all those uh, 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 uh. at this point you have been friend zone you are not trying to marriage zone no uh, let me tell you don't take a journey of marriage with somebody who's unclear Clarity is the order of the day for proper movement. How can I enter a car? They say, where are you going to? Somewhere. Where? You go to the park and say, hey, actually, uh, you know, let's be honest. If you go to a park and they say, where do you want to go to? Just show me a car. We're in it. So I don't match. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Ladies in ministry often You jump one complete one. Is it part of... Uh -huh. Should you go ahead to the face of cutting in a relationship, engaging or planning a wedding, if you notice that there are still some foundational strengths, quality or character that needs to be worked out or evident in your partner or relationship, although there is a noticeable willingness to become better? Willingness is important to a degree. 
But willingness is not a thing to just trust. Some people who are caught in certain patterns are actually willing. The Bible says, please, this is not Nigerian politics. If you be willing and obedient, <laughs> you will eat the good of the land. Willingness alone does not give you the goodness of the land. Obedience must follow. I'll give you an example. A lot of people are willing to change in certain areas, but not obeying instructions in those areas. And that's a foundational thing. Let me say this. Uh, there is an abuse of what we understand grace to be. Grace is an enablement. The action of man is what completes the grace of God in manifestation. So it's not my excuse, for example. It's an enablement. You know, the Bible says in Titus that the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to say no to ungodly living. If I don't say they know, the enablement is wasted. I'll get into excuses. So, when you're talking about the willingness to change, number one, when you call a thing foundational, it's foundational. For instance, foundational Christian teaching, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, do not be unequally yoked. It's foundational. There's no go come about it. He said, for what fellowship is light and darkness? Fellowship. It's foundational. For instance, it's foundational that you are with a believer who calls sin, sin. Not my weakness. It's sin. Let me tell you, one of the things that has faded in this generation is through repentance. People just chew gum and come and they are giving their life. Which Jesus is touching? Jesus of Ebutemeta, I be Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, I confess you are my Lord and Savior. For never you know we get. So we vilify people actually weeping before the Lord. Like it's a sin. Or they are beings, they are, they are inside flesh. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. You know, the Bible talks about a sad conscience. There are certain things we have explained away because God is far from that conscience. So if you call it foundational, see, there are certain things church does not need to punish you for. When the Holy Spirit convicts you, you yourself, you will tell yourself, oh boy, something needs to change your life. But what we do is because no punishment is visited on us. We get used to nonsense. Hello? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, when you say willing, now the parameters of willingness showing in obedience is very critical. I'll give you an example. Some people are only willing privately. They are not obedient. Hope you know there are weaknesses you can't come out of just by yourself. That's why God has equipped people to help you. So he's privately or she's privately willing on this foundational issue and you are taking the private willingness. Do you know there are certain things you cannot say you are out of until somebody equipped to help you know whether you are out of it. So if there's privacy in that willingness, there's a problem. For instance, you can't be under authority. These are pastors. And I, you cannot submit to the person you say you are under for the thing you say you are willing about. That means you are first of all deceiving the spiritual authority under which you are. And I me, you want the faithful too. This is why people receive shock like naked wire when they enter marriage. Because you do private willingness, then public disobedience. Then I say, oh my God, actually, he promised me. Promise and fail is the order of the day when people cannot be bold about the system God has set in place to help them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So willingness and obedience go together. So before you say, I'm taking this step because of his willingness, I must see the proof of his willingness in obedience. Is he submitting to any system? Submitting to any authority? It's a big question in that area that you consider foundational. For instance, some people are following those people that are frozen in this generation. Each church, go to church, leave daddy freeze alone. By their fruit, you shall know them. Leave daddy, all his disciples they are coming, they are converted now in the name of Jesus. Leave them alone. Go to, thank God you know I'm not a church pastor. So, this is not member I'm looking for. Am I a church pastor? What's the name of my church? As busy as our lives, we are committed in our church. I serve in the teens department. We go to church. I go and sit down in church. When I travel with my pastor, I serve in any capacity.
capacity given, usher, cameraman, anything, sweeper, announcer, anything. Well, I'm a parachurch minister. Come and sit somewhere, let them wash your head. Come say, please don't. Don't, don't, don't follow the people. From each church, each church that 15 WhatsApp messages will come in 20 minutes. And you're asking, oh, each church. Then, since you are now rich enough to pay YouTube subscription, you can minimize it and be hearing it while doing every other thing. Go where you will stand physically in church. You know, for say the gathering of the brethren, not talking electronic gathering, physical gathering. Willing and obedient. If you do not see authority in anybody's life, they are danger. Praise God. I remember one particular time in our relationship. I think he was in law school then, I'd graduated, and we were having issues in our relationship. And we were taking a not walk. Not issues, issues. Go ahead. <laughs> we were taking a walk that day. We were passing near Total Filling Station. Uh, filling st a total Filling Station. Beware of women. I can't remember the total. Go ahead. <laughs> and this man told me something that offended me greatly. Kanda he one. said even if he had money, as in money, millions right now, we will not get married. Like he will not marry me now. I seen. I was offended. Like what do you mean? But I went back because he said we're not ready. I went back. I sat down and take it. Isaiah said, he that believes does not make haste. Yes, I didn't keep up forever like you can see we are married. Do you understand? <laughs> but he that believes. He that, I was giving two of us a chance to know whether this is one chance or I sincerely, I said, why I remember that date was because I, I knew how much I was hot that day and what I put into improving, you know, in terms of character and, you know, development. As in, I sat down and looked at it critically and started making adjust, adjustment in my life. That's why we could marry two months and after. And by the way, that comment was not directed at that. It was directed at both. Yes. Me, my, I knew I had problems. <laughs> No, we say Christian brother here, they born for campus gym, gym, come marry, everything scatter. And then, <laughs> so if your spouse tells you there's an issue, um, uh, if your uh, to be yeah tells you that there's an issue, these things need to be adjusted. Tells you if you see that there's an issue, because some people cannot even see that they have issue. Let me tell you, some people are dating people. Let's take premarital class. No, everybody's marriage is different. Oh she. Oh, she. Mumu, they smell. Oh, she. Some people are unteachable, ungovernable, unguidable. Secret service members of churches. They go physically, but nobody knows them. Nobody can hold them. Nobody can correct them. Nobody can do anything. For some, they have been to 10 churches in seven years. There's a problem. You put a nomadic, it's a nomadic marriage that happened. You will just be changing church. Tell me. Continue. You know, one of the things that God said to the churches, one of the, uh, the churches in theatre, I think in Revelation 3, he, says, he said he knows about their love, their faith, mentioned some other things, and he said their constant improvement. God doesn't expect you as a Christian to remain stagnant. If there are character issues in your life, and see, if anybody that has an issue knows that there's an issue in this area except you don't want to be sincere with yourself if you know there are an issue you need to make be making constant improvement constant improvement in all things praise god ladies and gentlemen we'll come back and continue the question 